Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the new features and changes that are included in version 3 of the Biogen add-on for Blender 2.8. Some of the previous features have been moved around and new things have been added to make the add-on more functional and easier to use. Just like before, the demo or work shown in this video can be downloaded from the add-on's download page. The aim of version 3 is to make the add-on more useful as a concepting and modeling tool by providing you with a collection of easily placeable template objects which can be found from the traditional Shift-A menu. If you open this menu, then you will see Biogen at the bottom. Attached to this are categorical submenus where you can choose which type of objects to make. You will see the original modification styles here, and if you click on them, then it will place down a template object with that style already applied. From there, you can go into edit mode and start building out new shapes. Of course, you can still apply these as modification styles to pre-existing objects, but having both options now means that you can also use them as template starting points for concepting new ideas. The purpose of the generation panel in the Biogen tab of the end menu has slightly changed. Instead of being used to spawn in new semi-randomized objects, it will now be used for more complex generation algorithms that will likely require some kind of input mesh. One has been included in this version called MetaCloud, but we'll take a look at that later on in the video. Don't worry, everything else that used to be in this panel has now been moved to the new Shift-A menu. For example, if you go into Biogen and then Hard Surface, you will find the popular Hard Surface skin mode is still available. You may also notice that a new variation to this skin mode has been created called Hard Surface Skin Simple. This is basically a copy of the original mode that does not create valleys or extrude islands from the surface, making it useful for genuine low poly shape construction. For the Hard Surface Faceting object, instead of placing a randomized cuboid shape, it starts with a simple cube and a subsurf modifier. The decimation values have also been adjusted to make it lower poly by default, allowing you to get more definite shapes rather than abstract bumpy meshes. However, if you're still looking for abstract, then you can still get these effects really easily by adjusting the appropriate parameters on the modifier stack, such as the decimation ratio and the display strength parameters. These default changes make it easier to concept cleaner science fiction hard surface shapes in a shorter amount of time. A note to make about creating the point cloud template object from the add menu is that it will not create an emissive material for you because that would be quite unnecessary if you were spawning many of them into the scene. However, if you apply the point cloud style from the modify panel to a pre-existing object, then you still have the option to automatically generate an emissive material if you don't want to make one from the material tab. If you take a look in the organic add menu, then you will see a new object called organic skin. It works exactly like the hard surface skin object, except it makes use of the organic shell style which can still be applied from the modify panel. This is one of my favorite template objects because it lets you make these abstract shapes very quickly and easily. For those of you who don't know how the skin modifier works in edit mode, when you have a vertex selected, press E to extrude a new one and click to place it wherever you want. With a vertex selected, you can also press Ctrl plus A to change the influence the modifier has on that specific vertex, so you can scale it up and down. What's also useful about this is that if you have two vertices that you want to make a bridge between, just select both of them and press F, which will automatically fill in the space between them with geometry. When you go back into object mode, the modifiers will take effect and create the new result for you. Another addition to the add-on is the FX Pixelate mode, which can be found either in the Modify panel of the End menu, or the FX section of the Add menu. If you place down the template object, you can see that what it does is remove random faces from the mesh and bevel some of the corners between them. Of course, you can go into Edit mode and build shapes from this. The Subsurf modifier has been disabled in Edit mode to help with increasing the performance while making changes. One thing you need to keep in mind about this method is that if you are applying it as a modification style, then you need to make sure that your original object has enough geometry. So what we're going to do now is take a quick look at the new generation method accessible from the end menu called MetaCloud. This technique was picked up from Jan on Twitter, who does all kinds of interesting daily tips for Blender users. I recommend following them if you're not already, I'll leave a link to their profile in the description. What it does is create an inconsistent cloud-like result from an input mesh by using a particle system combined with a metapool instance to generate the result. If you have an object selected with an appropriate density of geometry, then you can get some interesting looking meshes. One thing to keep in mind, however, is that in this version of Biogen, the instance object is not deleted after the procedure is complete, so there will still be a floating ball in the world that looks a bit out of place. It's easy to remove though, just go into edit mode, hover over the ball, press L to select all the linked vertices, and then delete them. Have fun experimenting with this mode, I'm sure that more complex and interesting generators will become available over time. There is one note to make about building meshes with this add-on, which is that depending on the style you are using, the mesh results before and after applying modifiers may look slightly different. This tends to happen more with the hard surface skin mode when the decimation ratios are set to extreme values. The hard surface faceting style is generally more reliable, but it may be more difficult to make complex connective structures. 
Just keep in mind that this add-on is intended to help you use generative modeling techniques to concept new ideas with an emphasis on non-destructive and consequently changeable results. It's not designed to be used as an all-in-one solution for building perfectly manifold meshes for things like 3D printing or game-ready assets. You will still require a degree of modeling knowledge to take these results and adapt them to the context of your choosing. Remember, you can download the add-on and the demo resources from the link in the description. To get it for free, just leave a zero in the price field or a high number if you want to leave me a tip. I also want to give a massive thank you to the people who have been leaving me tips on the free resources. You are the reason I can keep giving this content away for free. If you ever feel like leaving more, then it's easy to do with Gumroad. You can just go back to the product page and use the same price field. I should say that for those of you who like to use Blender Market, the add-on is now available on there as well. But since they don't allow free products, it's been put up at $1. And part of those earnings go directly to the Blender Development Fund as well. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe and ring the notification bell. You can follow me on social media or join our Discord server to stay up to date. So enjoy the content and I'll see you next time.